Hello and welcome to Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. On Monday, as we begin a new week with more uh, relevant sports stories from around the world that I have with me today. Tolulokwe, how are you? Yeah, good morning, of course. You know, it's always been uh, a good time, you know, talking sports, especially, you know, when you look at what is happening in the world of sport. Yes. And now, you know, uh, going, you know, to all the way from Nigeria to Birmingham, in the sense of taking out on our team we're definitely, in Nigeria. Wow. We're definitely going to talk about <laughs> Birmingham. Um, Nigeria finished its participation in the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games with a big splash on the medals table on Sunday, August 7th, with the ladies once again leading the country's march to glory. The celebration began in the morning at Alexander Stadium, where Toby Amusan, Favor Ophili, Rose Chukuma, and Grace Nwanko uh, Inwokocha. Uh, won the 4x100 meter women's relay race. The quartet also set a new African record of 42.10 seconds to win uh, Nigeria's 11th gold medal in what has turned out to be the country's best performance at the Commonwealth Games. Toby Musa, Favor Ophili, Rose Chukuma, and Grace Sunwo Kocha. Com um, comprised the women's 4x100 meter relay team. Earlier, the English team won, uh, took gold in the men's 4x100 uh, relay with a uh, quartet of Udodi on Wuzurika, uh, Favor Ash uh, Alaba Akintola, and Raymond Equevo. Uh, left to take the bronze medal as the Nigerian men finished in 38.81 seconds, taking third place. Nigeria currently sit sixth, sixth with 14 medals. Yeah, of course. Why know. is this our best performance ever in these games? You know, let me refresh your memory a bit. You know, uh, when you know the sports minister Sunday that came on board, uh, he said that uh, you want to revamp a sports in Nigeria. You want to make sure you know the right people are put in the right place. You know, uh, to get the best result, and also you know uh, to give uh, these uh, gladiators, you know, I mean the athletes, you know, the best of preparations and of course and the best of welfare package, you know, in order to get uh, the best out of them. And this is our best outing. You know, are the Commonwealth Games, of course, you know, and they're becoming, you know, the best African nation as far as the Commonwealth Games is concerned. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, you know, it, it, it really it means if you know we want to do the right thing, you know, we know the trade to you know, uh, you know, to work. You know, there's been the right plenty of complaints about the able-bodied athletes exactly. not performing as well as yes. they expected. Exactly. You know, I saw something, you know, uh, 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 last last year. You know, uh, the track, of course, uh, and Yaba Tech, you know, mm. when uh, they were uh, doing Olympic trials, you understand? So, you know, uh, the, the, the AFN, you know, a uh, president, you know, Tonoba Kokoa, you know, uh, said, you know, you know, it's going to be a new era, of course, you know, for uh, at, uh, athletics in Nigeria, you understand? Yeah. You know, gone are the days, you know, where athletes lament, you know, poor welfare preparations, you understand? So, not, uh, uh, you know, going here and there, you know, looking for who to adopt them, you know, sponsor them, but this time around, let us give it to them. Now, going to Commonwealth Games, of course, these athletes were well prepared, you know, given the best of preparations. So, I the promise, you know, to make Nigerians and Nigeria proud. And what at does the end this of the mean, day, though, going forward to the next Olympics? Are our athletes, especially our field and track, are they going to be uh, more reliable to bring more gold, more medals in general? Are we going to do better than we've done in previous uh, Olympics? Yes, you know, if you know, if we were anticipating a, a better outing at the next Olympics, you know, we have to build on the success achieved at the Commonwealth Games. You know, by you know doing the needful, you know, let these athletes you know continue in their top-notch preparations. Mm -hmm. You know, focus on them, give them you know uh, what of course what uh, 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 what you know what we you know uh, ginger them you know you know to give their best and make the environment conducive you know for them. You understand? So now you just have to monitor them. You understand? If you don't do that, you know, as uh, some of them you know might think, oh, we, you know, we won't go the last time. Now we have been abandoned, but no, Amusson, it has to be continued. Amusson and Brumer have both broken records during this uh, Commonwealth Games. It says a lot that 
a little bit of preparation, a little bit more uh, resources allocated to our athletes can produce such results. Are we looking at not just perhaps the two best uh, female and overall athletics uh, performers in Nigeria, in African history, and potentially in the world for the next, I don't know, five to 10 years? Yeah, of course, you know, uh, looking at uh, Amusha and Esther Brume. So, you know, they, you know, uh, uh, yes, of course, you know, uh, they continue, you know, uh, winning medals and charging up and you know, setting a new world record, you understand? So, you know, it takes a lot of hard work, you know, to get to the level, you know, uh, they are now. And, you know, it didn't just, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, start, you know, yesterday, of course, uh, you know, uh, this thing started a couple of years ago. So, uh, we've known the level, you know, we've known the level of hard work, you know, put in by these two at least. And, you know, this first thing, of course, you know, should, you know, get the kudos because uh, he really, in, you know, he really invested in this ladies, you understand? So, knowing full well that, you know, a, a, a glamour lady, you know, blessing a cock body, of course, you know, you know, you know, a, a, a was hit, you know, by a hammer. Yes. So, um, we have to, you know, make do, you know, with what we have. So, we have to invest in them to make sure that, you know, the glory, you know, of this nation, you know, uh, does not uh, sink down the ocean. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to some f uh, football news as uh, Sevilla have reached an agreement in principle to sign free agent Isco on a two-year deal, the La Liga club said on Sunday. The former Real Madrid midfielder will undergo a medical today, August 8th. Before finalizing his transfer, Sevilla added, uh, Spanish playmaker Isco will become the Andalusian club's third summer signing after they brought in defender Alex Tellers on a uh, season-long loan from Manchester United on Thursday and centre-back uh, Marcao from Galatasaray last month. Isco confirmed his departure from Real Madrid in May after nine successful years in the Spanish capital, winning 19 trophies, including three league titles, five Champions League trophies, and four Club World Cups. The 30-year-old, who spent two seasons at Malaga and also played for Valencia, made more than 350 appearances and scored 53 goals for Real Madrid. However, he was sparingly used by manager Carlo Ancelotti last season, playing only 17 times in all competitions, as Real won the league title and Champions League. Isco capped 38 eight times by Spain, has worked with Sevilla boss Julian Lopetegu twice before with the national team in the build-up to the 2018 World Cup and later that year during the Spanish manager's brief spell in charge at Real. Isco, one of the most talented midfielders in recent times during his uh, period he was a 21-year-old that Barcelona and Real Madrid were vying heavily for. He ended up choosing Real Madrid. But I know he's a, a many years uh, removed from that 21-year-old uh, wonder kid that everyone was after. But even at 30, how is he already seemingly done in uh, Real Madrid? Well, you know, uh, sometimes you know, uh, football can be cruel, you understand. So... And we have seen a couple of our brilliant guys, you know, talented players, skillful players, you know, uh, with the ability to turn things around, you know, to make things happen for their uh, team, you know, uh, fell by the wayside, you know, so didn't live up, you know, to expectation, you know, didn't, of course, uh, 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 you know, uh, achieve, you know, of course, what they set out to achieve. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you begin to ask yourself different questions. Like, what is happening to this guy? He's, of course, he's a talented player, mm -hmm. you know, very technical, you understand? So he has the ability, you know, uh, to make things happen happen for his club side, you know, you know, uh, of course he's got that capacity in him, you know, to win, you know, to change the course of the game. But, you know, it is football. But going to where you will be valued and you will get a playing time, you know, is the ultimate, you understand? So because, uh, you know, when you have a playing time in a club, it definitely, you know, uh, give you an edge the national team set up. But I'm happy for Isco, you understand? So joining at Sevilla, you know, I think uh, should be a good omen for At 30 Isco. years... Young, yes, you know, uh, at 30 years young, we both agree he's still got all the technical requirements for him to be a, a standout uh, midfield performer, even for Sevilla. Uh, and he brings a wealth of 
uh, experience, five Champions League titles, multiple league titles. Exactly. Um, could he revitalize his career? Could he revamp himself to the level that he enters the Sevilla team and he becomes an undroppable first team starter? Yeah, you know, uh, of course that is possible. But you know, uh, before concluding on that, you know, we have to look at factors you know surrounding it, like age-wise and stuff. It's not getting younger. As far as football is concerned, you know, it's getting older on a daily basis. You understand? So, and when you are getting old in you know, football-wise, you know, uh, you begin to, you begin to drop. Of course, uh, in, uh, in pace, your pace begins to reduce. You understand? So, you know, uh, your swift movement, of course, also you know uh, begins to drop inch by inch. You understand? But one thing is certain: the experience, you know, uh, will be there. And of course, you know, uh, his eyes, you know, for for goals, of, of, we also need to be there. But it has to uh, do a, a, a lot of work, you understand? So, you know, to stamp his authority, you know, in the team, coming from Real Madrid, you know, it's winning nice. five Champions League, multiple league titles, of course, uh, you know, you know, won't get you a, 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 a spot just like that in the team. You have to work, you have to compete with other guys there, you know, who are also aiming to lay claim, you know, to a certain belt in, every, in that team. But he has to do a lot of work, and once he gets his opportunity, you know, he has to take it and stand firm. And of course, I make sure, you know, uh, he, you know, he, leads, he signs a signature, you know, on the team by achieving that he will be a constant, a uh, regular, and the coach will find it difficult, you know, to, to keep him on the bench. All right. Um, new manager Eric Ten Hag saw the depths of the crisis in Manchester United when his side fell to a 2-1 Premier League defeat by Brighton and Hove Albion at Old Trafford on Sunday, August 7th, with German Pascal Gross scoring twice. United fans hopes that the off-season would mark a turning point uh, have faded with the club failing to make major moves yet in the transfer market. And there was a grim familiar, uh, familiarity in the club's opening match. The former Ajax coach witnessed a performance that was every bit as disjointed as those produced under his predecessors, Ralph Rangnick and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer last season. The sense that this was a continuation of last year's decline began before kickoff, where there were yet more loud and angry protests against United's owners, the American Glazer family, under the South Stand. If that felt familiar, then the sight of Scott McTominay and Fred in midfield, as United labored against Graham Potter's superbly drilled side, was virgin on deja vu. United had been shambolic in their 4 0 loss at Brighton in May, and even with debuts for defender Lissandro Martinez and midfielder Christian Eriksen, little felt new or changed about the performance. The manager is known as a disciplinarian. He's also a very astute tactical um, manager. He will be brutal with these players. Watching that match, it felt like we were just watching Fred and McTominay make the same old mistakes. The midfield seemed as slow as it has always been, even with Ericsson taking the burden of creating uh, chances uh, off the uh, way down shoulders of Bruno Fernandes and he continued to drop deeper Ericsson that is he continued to drop deeper into midfield deeper than he should have at one point he was playing within the back line trying to receive the ball and create long uh, passes for uh, players to get on the ball this midfield is too slow, too sluggish. Do you agree? Well, uh, yeah, partially, of course. I, I, was, I agree partially. You know, reason being that, you know, look, even I, a manager, of course, you know, was employed you know, to manage these players. They are professionals, full-fledged professionals, you understand? So you are not teaching them how to pass ball. You know, you are not teaching them how to make runs. You are not teaching them how to hit the ball, you understand? So you only, of course, you know, come up with your, you know, with your tactical formation, select are the best players, you know, we perfectly execute your formations, you understand? Tell them how you want to play, you understand? So, you know, um, pass instruction to them by the sidelines, the side you understand? But now... No, when you are too harsh on players, you, know, you get unfavorable results. You know, so, and players can connect together you know, to get you out of the way, you understand. Now, the problem, of course, of Manchester United you know, is beyond the coaching. 
we have to be honest with ourselves, you understand? So now, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, wants out of the team, you understand? So Maguire is not, isn't the problem, you understand? So I believe you know, the tactical formation of the coach, of course, uh, you know, uh, 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 is something that is giving you know, uh, these players you know, a headache, you understand? We all know the quality McTominay possesses. We know the quality Fred also possesses. Of course, uh, we also know where Ericsson is coming from, you understand? So when things don't work the way you, know, you anticipate, you have to... But let's, you know, let's, let's be honest. Ericsson is a world-class player. Exactly. Bruno Fernandes, world-class player. Ronaldo, beyond world-class player. Rashford, debatable in the last couple of seasons. Um, but Scott McTominay, Fred, these are not world-class players. S Scott McTominay, I would argue, has a future in the team. But Fred has made so many mistakes in so many matches. And he holds a very important position in that team. He is the uh, anchor in midfield. He's supposed to be the one uh, sweeping up. Uh, errors from the other players and yet in that game he made errant passes that put the team in, in trouble within the first 20 minutes and on more than one occasion he got dispossessed by a Brighton team that were livelier that were uh, sharper at uh, pressing players and could retain possession better than Manchester United even though and this is a big point even though Manchester United had more uh, possession in that match, the Graham Potter's men seem to create more open chances. Why is that still such a big problem, even though this team has plenty of bodies and at one point was even considered a more um, expensive squad than yeah. even Manchester City? Okay. Yeah, let me pick it. You know, let me pick it up from this angle. You understand? So yeah, in in every uh, uh, team setup, either at the club level or national team level. Yeah, they are always a, 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 a psychologist, you know, in every team setup. So, what is his job, you know, to psych up these players to know the state of their mind, whether uh, whether they are ready or not for the game? You understand? So, all these players you mentioned, of course, you know, uh, apology, you know, uh, to you. So, uh, Fred, of course, uh, Fred, he, he, you know, he, he is an above average player, as you understand, and he plays international football as well. Then, second, you know, uh, for me, I think, you know, he. he, he a psych, uh, the, uh, the, the team psychologist, you know, should know, uh, you know, uh, the state of this player's mind, you understand, before every game, you know, and telling the coach, oh, hey, this guy is ready, this guy is not ready, in about two, three weeks' time, he will be ready. But Fred, you, know, you manage do with what you have. And so if you don't have anybody better than Fred, you have to keep playing him in that position. Otherwise, you know, what you don't anticipate will happen at the end of the day. But he has to, you know, he has to double his effort. Because, yes, I can attest, you know, to what you say, that, you know, Fred, for a very long time, even at the national team setup, you know, he always, you know, uh, 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 make costly errors, you understand? But I don't know where he always has his mind anytime he's on the, he's on the field of play. But Ten Hag needs to do a lot of job, you understand? So make sure he gets exactly what he wants, you know, from these players going into the subsequent matches. All right. Thank you, uh, Tolope. It's a pleasure having you on board. I hope to have more of your uh, well-thought-out analytical uh, appreciation for the sports that we all love. Now, uh, I will leave you with Nick Kerrigan, who launched a dozen aces as he walloped Yoshito Nishioka, 6-4, My name is Mikhail Tinubu, and it's a pleasure, as always, having you join us on Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. Remember, life is never boring with some sports. Have a wonderful day.